BCTV's Roland Boyden here. I'm joined at the 545 Live Desk once more by my often co-captain, co-host Joe Bushy. Joe, thanks for joining me here thanks for, for having a me again, Roland. weekend edition. It's BCTV's weekly media roundup. Every Friday we get a chance to sit down, take a look at uh, area headlines, look at some upcoming events, break down some events that you might have missed in the past week and want to see some footage of, talk about what's showing on BCTV, some municipal coverage. We pack it all in there. We do it in 15 minutes or less even, uh, depending on how fast I talk. Though some, some say Almost. I could talk slower. <laughs> But uh, we've got 15 minutes of your time, we hope. Uh, we're going to make the most of it here and uh, break it all down on 545 Live. Miss Graham. And I'm Mr. Moore. And we're part of the BUHS TV television production team. We're going to be broadcasting when, Mr. Moore? Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning, Ms. Graham. So make sure you stay tuned, Brattleboro. Welcome back to this February 7th, 2014 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden, joined by Joe Bushy here. Uh, that was a look at... Uh, from the BUHS TV news studios up at the high school as they gear up for a new semester, which means Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 10 a.m. live on BCTV Channel 10. That's just two clicks up the dial from this here Channel 8 you're watching right now. On Channel 10, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you can see their live broadcast. They uh, have some advisory announcements, but they also do uh, some skits, uh, clips from around the community, and a lot more. So check that out. Got an all new ca cast of characters here with a new semester starting. We're all looking forward to seeing that. All right. Uh, the next generation of the, it Walter is, Cronkite. It, there was a lot of excitement. We were up there to film that teaser clip with uh, Allison Cram and Toby Moore, the teachers of the class there, as they were getting trying to get all the equipment in order. Uh, and there was a lot of excitement. So I'll be uh, excited myself to see what those kids can put together. Okay. There's a lot, of, a lot of raw talent in that class for sure. For sure. Okay. Uh, Joe, uh, let's start with the select board meeting this week. Uh, that was broadcast live this past Tuesday on BCTV, but if anybody missed uh, the multi-hour broadcast, uh, we're going to play a clip for you in a moment, but uh, we also can summarize. But of course, I should mention, if you really want the full perspective, the full picture, and how any of uh, the many meetings we cover in BCTV go down, you can just watch them, the full meeting in their entirety, gavel to gavel uh, at brattlebrotv.org. Uh, let's start maybe with this hiring pause. Joe. So uh, the board has come out and said that uh, even if you're talking about filling an existing position that has been recently vacated, uh, town department heads are now uh, being asked to uh, consult the board, uh, bring it before the board before they fill that position at all. We'll see how that turns out. Speaking of uh, police and fire, there's a new upgrade on the way, highly controversial, uh, but uh, an upgrade that uh, most seem to agree is needed, uh, albeit the price tag is something that any uh, taxpayer in town has taken a, a moment's pause at seeing. However, the upgrade is going forward and the design firm uh, behind uh, the up grades uh, reported back to the board they've been in close consultation with the police fire committee that was appointed uh, late last year uh, but they've got uh, some designs here that's where we're going to start with our clip we've got the historic town hall it's on the national register the um, the department of interior says whatever we do to touch this building we have to be able to uncover it in the future that's Ray Giolito as he takes the board on a tour of the plans for the various buildings involved. You can uh, see not just uh, more footage from that Brattleboro Select Board meeting, uh, but you can see a, a variety of programs on this police fire proposed upgrade, including an open studio with Police Chief Gene Rin and then uh, Brattleboro Town Manager Barb Sondag that breaks down a lot of the details on uh, the advantages of the new structure they proposed and the disadvantages of the current uh, police structure that we happen to be uh, in the midst of here, Joe, as BCTV Comfortably situated <laughs> inside. shares uh, our downtown studios with uh, the police station at 230 Main Street here. Moving on, uh, let's talk Vermont Yankee. Hard to get through a 545 Live without bringing up Vermont Yankee a bit as uh, this past August, uh, the announcement that they'd be closing uh, shop there voluntarily, quarter four of this uh, now year that we're in 2014 that means there won't be another new year's 
that goes by with Vermont Yankee being open. Kind of mind-boggling for anybody that's been following the story. Yes, it is. Um, but uh, there's, a, there's a component here that uh, is less than simple, and that's how the decommissioning is going to move forward. We're talking about a, a lot of financing involved, and then also uh, just where the nuclear waste goes has to be on anybody's mind, however the right. politics fall here. So, and how long it stays here in yeah, Wayne County. Yeah, absolutely, right. in, in this particular region. And it's not stuff you can just kind of go out with a shovel and throw in the back of a pickup and drive on out of here. So, uh, Put it in canoes and send it to the next town down, <laughs> down river. I'm sure we'll see that plan. Anyway, yeah. uh, BCTV uh, also has a, a line to Senator Bernie Sanders through his official YouTube channel, Senator Sanders, all one word. So that would be youtube.com slash users slash Senator Sanders if you wanted to check it out for yourself. But we show us full press conferences again on BCTV Channel 8. The decommissioning process at Vermont Yankee was uh, his topic of choice for his latest YouTube blog post. Let's take a look yeah. at the clip. Generally speaking, the states do not have any significant role, Madam Chair, in that process. They can be observers, there can be public meetings, they can provide input, but at the end of the day, the uh, company and the NRC work out the agreement. Uh, Madam Chair, I think on the uh, face of it, uh, that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Speaking of Vermont Yankee, uh, hardly a week goes by where you can't watch some Vermont Yankee-themed programming on BCTV, either right here on Channel 8 or sometimes government-based programming up on Channel 10. They range anywhere from 20 minutes to two to three hours. Uh, there was a Vermont Interactive Television webcast series uh, public service board hearing on Vermont Yankee. Uh, the state's plans there uh, that you can see still for one more week here on BCTV up on Channel 10. Uh, but if you want to stay right here on Channel 8, this coming week, you can watch a piece uh, courtesy of hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez. Uh, she sat down with uh, nuclear activist, legendary nuclear activist Ray Shaddis uh, when he was at the uh, Center Congregational Church in Brattleboro uh, at the end of this 2013 year. Uh, was starting to put together a piece and then uh, found out that she would need some licensing rights from him as he's had a, a series of professional documentaries made about them. Licensing rights came in this week. That means all next week on BCTV Channel 8, the program with Ray shows. Let's take a look at a clip right now. Energy is really not a very good manager. It's really not a very well-run business. They made several bad business decisions with respect to Vermont Yankee. The first one being to buy the damn thing. Um, and, and it was the result of a kind of arrogance. Before we go any further, Joe, we got a, a wealth of footage from this nor'easter that landed on the That's region. That's right, it snowed, didn't it, Roland? You were out and about with the plow uh, and uh, the camera. Hold well, on, my shovel's the... right under here <laughs> under the table somewhere. The Let's, plow's uh, outside, so uh, we'll... We'll uh, get the official footage in a moment, yep. but uh, it's, I would say the, uh, I guess, damage period has passed for people I think to get the, back I on think the I think the rough part's over, but I would say definitely depending on where you measured it and, of course, how you measured it, there was at least a good 10 to 12 inches, maybe 14 in some places throughout Wyndham County. I'm sure much more in higher elevations, but they're really, and it dragged on. It dragged on throughout the whole day yesterday. It was like you woke up yesterday morning, there was snow. You woke up today, there was snow. So, um, and certainly the, the talk so, of the weather media as well kept seeing. Oh, for sure. Well, at, at the onset of this storm, it said we we're going to have three, three right in a row. And now that, as it usually does, that seems to have fizzled. But uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, We'll see what happens because, uh, like they say in New England, if you don't like the weather, just wait a minute and it'll change. So that's right. Um, we'll make the best of it because we know how important that weather is to our local economy and our that's regional true. economy. You know, without it, without that snow, it's not the same. Um, with this week's nor'easter uh, making headlines everywhere, it's. Uh pretty easy to wager which way Groundhog Day will leave us as far as the six extra weeks of winter go. But with Groundhog Day approaching, uh, it's hard not to cross your fingers a little bit for anybody here in New England. For more on that, we turn to the latest member of our uh, 545 Live team, our current affairs analyst, Robert Stack. He's the on-screen personality behind the weekly program, Let's Talk About Mental Health. And a good personal friend of mine, he joins us on the show each week to share his thoughts uh, on area events, news items, and more. And Groundhog, with Groundhog Day approaching, that is, he's uh, taken a look. We've uh, recorded a segment here in our downtown studios earlier today, and that's where we're headed next. Recently down in Pennsylvania, they celebrated Groundhog Day, and uh, 
I'm not so sure what the outcome was, but I mean, I, and I often think it's kind of silly, but they probably think it's silly that we have cows walking up Main Street in the middle of the summer. But, uh, and I know that we have more winter coming and there'll be snowstorms and blizzards and all kinds of weather and ice and whatnot, but there's no denying that spring is coming and spring is in the air. Uh, town meeting is coming up. Uh, we're going to have mud season. I get in the seed catalogs and I'm looking in that and daydreaming. And so actually this is a great time. And even that storm that we had this week, if you look, the sun was out today, it's melting, it's really beautiful day out. And there's just something about, oh, I don't know, just the promise of spring. All right, uh, we'll take a look at upcoming events here. Uh, let's start uh, with a story. You've got video. Well, we've got a little local story there. We've yeah. got a, a local resident, Jay Meyer, has taken upon himself to join the Pink Heels tradition. And he has outfitted a uh, fire truck in the pink tradition, all pink. And he will be coming through town here, uh, coming up shortly. Uh, and he's going to be showing that truck off. And he's going to be down at the marina. And he's going to be getting his way through town. And you all want to come out and take a look at that? It's pretty cool if you haven't seen that pink heels. Yeah, if, uh, for folks maybe wondering, seeing a, a big pink fire truck, for more on the story, you were out when they came cruising through town last, Joe, uh, to yeah, get a 545 yeah. Live story. We had actually just kicked off the 545 Live series here. I think it was week That's right. three, week That's four. Right. It was very that. new. It was up when they uh, were in the Home Depot parking lot. That's Remember right, yeah. There? yeah. Let's take a little 545 Live flashback here and take a look at that Roll footage. back in time. Hey there, we're up here on Putney Road in Brattleboro with the pink fire trucks, pinkheels.com. As is customary now in 545 Live, Joe, before I head out, I actually send it to myself and then back to me because uh, on Thursdays, I host our video calendar now for BCTV. It's I've sponsored by That's the cool. Brattleboro Savings and Loan, and uh, we put it up on YouTube where we can use those annotations to create kind of clickable links. Oh, the little links. links where you click on the links in the yeah. screen there? That Heck, is the uh, coolest I can techno show people what we're talking I've about seen. by cutting to this week's calendar, which uh, includes some very cool local events like Putney Vaudeville. Uh, also... Uh, some area strolling of the heifers fun at this coming gallery walk Ooh. anytime there's a gallery walk on deck uh, makes for some interesting area events let's uh, take a look at the clip take it away roland it's time for gallery walk uh, and gallery walk does have its own website uh, where you can get all the details on uh, the various exhibits and events going on in town we'll also uh do a little bit more detailed focus on a uh, gallery walk specific event the kickoff for the strolling of the heifers valentine's day event uh, this week-long event uh, does have a big three-hour kickoff celebration happening at Gallery Walk, but throughout the week you can stop by the River Garden, recently purchased by the Strong of the Heifers, and send a farmer a valentine. For more details on this event, let's take a look at the Spotlight video. We will have open community valentine supplies available so that people can come in. You can send them to farmers, you don't have to, but we will have all the farmers. We have about 406 farmers, farms, and addresses available. So you're welcome to send them to farms. And this fits well with our mission to support local family farms by creating connections within the food system. All right, Joe, thanks good for night, joining David. me for- good, uh... good night, David, good night, chat. <laughs> we'll be back uh, next week, Friday, 5.45 p.m. right here on Channel E. Joe, I uh, hope you'll join me at the desk again. It's been- uh, uh, It's been too long. Great time having you and here. I, we gotta come back. Indeed. Uh, so again, uh, if you uh, want to catch any of these stories in more detail, find us on youtube.com slash TV or head right to the source at brettlebrotv.org, BCTV's official website. If you subscribe to us on YouTube, you can uh, be the first to know about all of our video uploads, which include this year 545 Live broadcast. It's in HD even if you want to watch it that way. Uh, see way more details of our complexion than uh, oh, we would oh, hope you would. Full but HD. Uh, pretty cool here full in BCTV's. <laughs> <laughs> HD studio. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy this gallery walk. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.